1807, Jefferson had decided against war and initiated the embargo of 1807 to just cut off trade, to stop American trade. Uh, there were problems with that, though. It didn't work very well. And Jefferson's successor in the White House, James Madison, uh, made the other choice. Uh, he did it reluctantly, but he ended up uh, supporting the idea of going to war with Britain. Uh, the issues were really not very different from the, the ones that had uh, separated the U.S. and Britain for some time. Uh, the British were interfering with American shipping uh, in an effort to take away anything that could help France. Uh, they were at war with France at the time and for a long time during this period. Um, they uh, continued to impress American sailors. We've discussed that before. Uh, and they continued to uh, support Native Americans who were at war with the U.S. Uh, of course, uh, Canada was under British control, uh, so it was uh, pretty easy for them to uh, have an impact uh, across uh, the border into the, the old Northwest Territory, which would include, of course, Michigan. Um, to give you an example of this, um, at the Battle of Tippecanoe, where William Henry Harrison had uh, defeated uh, the Native Americans, uh, Tecumseh's forces uh, had been found to have used British rifles. Uh, Tecumseh, of course, was the uh, Indian who opposed Harrison. Uh, so uh, there were a number of reasons why uh, the, the relations between the U.S. and Britain were not good at all. Now, as I said, at first, President Madison did not want to go to war, uh, but he was getting a lot of pressure from a group called the War Hawks. Uh, they were mostly Westerners and Southerners, and they were very unhappy with the embargo of 1807 because it closed off uh, their shipping overseas. They needed access to shipping uh, because uh, most of them were farmers and they wanted to uh, send their products uh, to market. Uh, they also uh, wanted the United States to conquer Canada uh, and thought that a war with Britain would give them the opportunity to do that. Now, on the other side, uh, the Federalists, especially in the Northeast, were against the war. Uh, they had enjoyed a very profitable uh, trading relationship with Britain and they didn't want war between the two countries because that would uh, destroy that. Um, and a lot of them, and these are, of course, a lot of wealthy people, uh, refused to lend money to the government during time of war. Well, this earned them a lot of hostility uh, from Americans uh, all over the country. Um, we're just going, there, have, there weren't that many battles in the war, but we're going to touch on uh, some of them. Uh, the American invasion of Canada uh, failed. They tried it in three different places, and it was unsuccessful. Uh, but on Lake Erie, uh, there was an American naval victory. Uh, Commodore Perry, Oliver Hazard Perry, um, defeated a British fleet uh, on Lake Erie. Now, uh, more significant, perhaps, were... Uh, the British attacks on Washington and Baltimore, and they uh, created uh, some of the, the best-known events in American history. Uh, the British burned public buildings, including the White House. Uh, it was destroyed except uh, for the walls that remained standing. Uh, there is more to the story, though, that we should not neglect, and that is that when uh, the United States attempted unsuccessfully to take Canada, uh, during an invasion of Canada, uh, some American troops, not ordered by a commander, but uh, acting on their own, burned uh, buildings in the city of York, which was the capital of Upper Canada. Um, so there was an element of revenge uh, in this uh, for the British. Um, after uh, leaving Washington, the British went north uh, and attacked Baltimore, uh, but the American fort you know, on Baltimore Harbor, Fort, fort McHenry, survived. Um, 
And this is the occasion in which Francis Scott Key uh, watched from a British ship in the harbor. Uh, he had uh, he wasn't accused of anything, but he uh, they detained him because he might have been able to pass information on to the Americans. Uh, so he was temporarily detained on this ship, and uh, this was the occasion for the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, he watched uh, the uh, bombardment of Fort McHenry, uh, the bombs bursting in air, uh, and uh, and that you know uh, at the end of it though. Uh, as the song says, our flag was still there. Uh, and, and that flag, uh, I should add, is now uh, displayed in the National Museum of American History in Washington. Uh, most of the country was untouched by battles uh, during the War of 1812. Uh, there were some in Canada and, on, and near the Canadian border. Uh, this, this map doesn't show up, but there was, you know, a naval battle on Lake Erie. Uh, these are the battles near uh, Washington and Baltimore. And then the last of the war was the Battle of New Orleans. Um, this uh, blue uh, area right here was uh, the uh, victory by Perry uh, on Lake Erie. Now, uh, the Battle of New Orleans was the one smashing American victory in the war. Uh, it made An Andrew Jackson a, a national hero, uh, and he uh, joins a, a group of other presidents throughout our history uh, who took his military exploits and turned them into the presidency. Uh, much more on Jackson later in the course. Um, the reaction to the war uh, was was this overwhelming sense of pride. Uh, the war was really a tie. There was no clear victory for the Americans, uh, but they had survived another confrontation with the strongest military power on the planet. Uh, and and this was it seemed to a lot of people as kind of the the final event in the American Revolution that our independence had been secured, and now it was not threatened. And, that, and there was a tremendous sense of celebration and pride at the end of the war. Uh, now, this uh, did not sit well uh, with uh, the Federalists. Uh, the Federalists, a, a group who opposed the war, met in Hartford, Connecticut, um, in late 1814 and early 1815. Um, there were even a few of them, although the convention didn't uh, support this uh, as a whole, there were some radicals who even wanted to secede from the Union, who wanted to leave. Um, and uh, this, after the, the uh, tremendous outpouring of, of uh, pride and celebration at the end of the war, uh, this made the Federalists uh, look extremely uh, un-American in the eyes of many people. Uh, this is a cartoon criticizing the Federalists. You can see uh, the devil's horns and the crown indicating monarchy, which is never a compliment in uh, the United States, uh, versus the, the woman who symbolizes liberty in the same way that the uh, woman of, of the Statue of Liberty uh, it symbolizes liberty. This is a tradition that, that comes from France. Uh, there, they have many statues of liberty there, and they arise from the French Revolution. Now, one of the strangest aspects of the War of 1812 is its bizarre timeline. And every one of these events you're going to see here uh, is the result of very slow communication. Um, the reason the United States went to war with Britain uh, is that Britain was attacking neutral shipping, American shipping. Now, it turned out that on June 23rd, 1812, Britain repealed those orders. They, they decided to stop attacking neutral shipping. And this took away the single most important reason why the United States would want to go to war. But of course, it took several weeks for word to cross the Atlantic uh, so two days later, the U.S. declared war on Britain, 
which turned out to be uh, largely unnecessary. At the end of the war, there was also a comedy of errors. Uh, the Hartford Convention that we just discussed met in uh, late December and early January, 1814-15, uh, and they, you know, ended up looking, you know, uh, very unpatriotic. Uh, but they didn't know uh, that during their meeting, the war actually had ended. The Treaty of Ghent was signed in Belgium, in Europe, ending the war. Uh, but, of course, it took uh, in news so, so long to travel across the Atlantic that no one on this side knew it. Uh, and maybe the greatest irony is that uh, the biggest battle and the most uh, successful U.S. Uh, effort on the battlefield was fought after the war was officially over. Uh, 13 days after, or, uh, or the, uh, let's see, it would be 15 days after the war uh, was over, uh, that's when uh, Andrew Jackson's forces defeated the British at the Battle of New Orleans. Uh, so this, um, I think, definitely qualifies as a strange war.